Hi, my name is Mike Martin. I'm from Casio and I'm here to show you the pattern sequencing features of the WK7500 and CTK7000. Pattern sequencing is not only one of my favorite features, but it's perhaps one of the most powerful features on these keyboards. Now a pattern can be an individual one measure drum part, so you can work with it like a drum machine, or it can be up to eight parts, each 16 measures long. You can build multiple patterns and work with them together to build a song. It's a great songwriting tool. So we're going to dive right in and I'm going to show you step by step how to create your own patterns. In order to get ready to record patterns or rhythms, we need to set up a few things. So to the left of the display, select user rhythms as I've done here. The display should now read that you have a rhythm selected and one with no data. I've selected number 7 because I already have information recorded in locations 1 through 6. Take a look just below the display. The next step is to select the pattern sequencer. As you can see, the pattern sequencer is already set up to record a drum part. Hit the record button to get ready for the next step. It should begin flashing. Now we're ready to set up our recording options. Press and hold the function button, then press the menu button. This combination brings us to the record menu. Here we can set quantize values and turn on the metronome. I've turned on the metronome and have my quantizing set to 16th notes. When you've made your selection, press the exit button to go to the next step. The final step is to select which tone you'd like to use. Using the Tone Category buttons, select Drum Kits and use the Data Wheel or the Plus and Minus buttons to choose a drum kit that you'd like. Now we're ready to begin recording. When you press the Start button, it will give you one measure of a pre-count and then it will begin a one measure loop. Now the display indicates that we've got recorded data in our drum part. When you're ready, press the right arrow button to begin recording another instrument. Now the display shows that we have the bass part selected. As we did before, we're going to select the record button, use the tone category selection, and choose a bass sound. I already have bass number 69, fretless bass, selected. When you're ready, hit the start button to begin the one measure loop again. Now we're going to do one final track. As before, scroll right to select the next part. Enable record and then choose a tone you'd like to use. I'm using a muted guitar for this next part. When you're ready, hit the start button to begin the one measure loop. Now we're going to take a moment to save all the work that we've done. To do this, first press the exit button. As you can see, the screen is now prompting us to store this pattern. Press the yes button, then choose a location number to store your pattern.
Using the cursor keys and the data wheel, we can name our pattern anything we'd like. Now we can use our pattern in our own song or performance. The arranger will automatically transpose the bass and guitar parts into any key.